Okay, since we now um, have graphing as a method for solving a system, we found out um, there were approximate answers, actual answers. We're now ready to add another method to that process. So take a look here at our goals. We want to be able to take 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 systems, which means 2 equations, 2 unknowns, 3 equations, 3 unknowns, and solve that system using something we call substitution. We want to recognize the properties we're using and be able to do um, <coughs> two or three linear equations to solve real world problems as well. But let's talk about what we learned in graphing um, and see if we can come up with uh, some pros and cons. If you had to say overall um, maybe what you like and dislike about graphing, and this is, you know, totally opinion, but I think something's going to rise to the top here. Um, the pros, most people will say that it was um, visual. Okay, so very easy to see your solutions, what's going on. Um, cons, um, takes a long time. So time consuming. Um, another pro, um, visual you can see it, um, you can identify the number of solutions quickly you have. Okay, and again I think that's because it is visual. Um, but one thing, when you did come up with those solutions, um, they were not always exact. So if we're talking about finding an answer to a problem, and we're not getting exact solutions, that's an issue. Because then you'd be guessing. You, may, you might round to the nearest tenth. Your um, partner might round to the nearest hundredth. You know, we don't have any consistency. So if you look back and think about this, um, these are some of them that you may have listed, uh, and they're probably in the top five um, on your list. But most of all, people will say that solving a system of graphing is a good one because it's very visual. You can see exactly what you have, where you're at, how many solutions, not always what the solutions are. So the biggest con is that we cannot tell exactly. It's not very accurate. Okay. We need our math problems to be accurate. So if we're going to start to um, discuss a new method, obviously the pro stays, so graphing is visual, but we want to be able to correct this inaccuracy thing. If we're not going to get exact answers, then why would we use that method? So we're going to use a new method and try to get exact answers from it, and it's called um, substitution. So I say, are you ready for substitution? Given a system of two equations at least, you have to ask yourself the following. Is one equation solved for the variable? At least one of the equations must have x or y by itself. Um, the system still can have two or more equations, which we discussed. And then the system can contain different types of equations. So if we have a parabola and a linear one, that's fine. Okay, so they don't have to be of the same type. So two equations at least, they could be of varying types, and one of the two equations must have a variable all by itself. So let's start with this example. I'm going to use the revealer and go through it. Here is our system. It says solve the system. If we follow those steps, then we're looking at does one of my equations have one of the variables all by itself? And the answer is yes. And that would be the second one. Y equals x plus 2. So if you have one of your equations solved by itself, 
What we'll want to do, instead of keeping them bracketed to show the system, you will want to write them separately, side by side. So I would highly recommend that from the beginning. Take your two equations, position them one next to each other so that you can then solve them. Okay? We will work on one at a time and we will substitute. Now think about the word substitute. Um, probably an easy definition is like the substitute teacher, the person who comes in and takes the place of the teacher for a day or days um, because they are not there. And so in this case, when we substitute something, it's supposed to be of equal weight. Now we know it's not always, not always is, but that's what we're going for here. We want to substitute because they are equal. Um, in a store, if you had a sale, they usually substitute an item if they run out of the one that's on sale. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to first take our two equations. We've got them situated side by side. And the one that is the variable by itself, or the one that has the variable by itself, so right here, y equals x plus 2, you will take that part of the equation, x plus 2 in this case, and you will replace that y value in the other equation, and you will get a new equation. So here it is. x plus, you can see right here, I took the y value and I inserted an x plus 2. The purpose of that is, instead of having an equation with two variables, we now have an equation with only one, and that one equation, one variable, is now easily solved. Look at it. I can collect like terms. 2x plus 2 equals 6. Subtract the 2 from both sides. 2x equals 4. Divide by 2. From there, x equals 2. What you would then do is take the equation you had not used yet, and you would put that x value in. So y equals 2 plus 2. So y equals 4. The solution 2, 4 is the exact value. Now on this one they came out to be whole numbers. If it was um, not whole numbers, uh, you would have gotten 3 eighths, 7 ninths, whatever the fraction was that was supposed to come out, as long as you're doing your arithmetic correctly. So review one more time here what we did. We took and we separated the two equations. The one that had the value by itself we replaced the single variable with the expression x plus 2. That allowed us in the new equation to have only one variable. From there we solved it, solved that one variable equa equation with our regular algebra steps and we were able to get a solution of 2, 4. Next one. Again, let's use the revealer. Let's start with y equals 2x squared and 3y equals 6x squared. In this case, when it says solve the system, again, you're looking for do I have an equation where y is by itself? And yes, it happens to be this top one. So start thinking, wherever there's a y in my second equation, I'm going to replace it with the expression 2x squared. So in doing that, put your two equations. And here's your 3y equals 6x squared, where you're going to do the replacing. So instead of a y, we would have that 2x squared go in and replace it. We would go ahead and multiply, and we get 6x squared equals 6x squared, which means 0. Now, I have a question here that says, well, what does that mean about our solution? You could go back and graph and get a visual, because that would help um, visualize what's happening. But also, some of you would have noticed right away, maybe algebraically, that, hey, if I divided this second equation by 3, we would have ended up with the first equation. So if I graph two equations, and they look exactly alike, and we know this is a problem in this case, what does it mean? It means that first one would be entirely on top of and intersecting with that second one we drew. So what kind of intersection or overlapping do we have? We have all real numbers 
which means we then have infinite solutions because every point on the first parabola would overlap on the second all points would be intersecting that's what we're looking for how many solutions do we have infinite because the two graphs are actually um, intersecting on top of each other on every single point So remember that you're not just going to have one solution. We said in the previous section that we could have zero solutions where they don't intersect at all. We could have one solution and we can have two. And that same thing's going to happen. Now let's talk about that. If this was an example where everything overlaps, notice in our algebra you have no variables remaining. Once you did your substitution and did that, this is a key piece. So if you wipe out all the variables, but you get what I call a true statement, that's when you know you're going to have infinite solutions. Now let's do um, a, the different version, the converse of that, which would be what if I came down to this point, say it was a different problem, and the variables disappeared, but now my statement was 0 equals 5. So again, we're going to say we have no variables remaining, and I now have a statement that says 0 equals 5. So that would mean a false statement. If I get a false statement, think about it. What kind of intersections would we have? If they're saying we don't have any numbers that overlap in a 0 equals 5, because we would have found them if we had them, then we have to assume that we have no solutions because the two graphs or three graphs, however many you have, how many equations you have, do not overlap. So that's what that's saying. So no solutions because there is no overlap. So if we just do the algebra and we don't look at the graph, this is how we're going to tell. So if we have one solution, we should get it with the algebra. If we have two solutions, we should get it by doing the algebra, x equals plus and minus 4. But if we end up with eliminating our variables and have a true statement, then we know everything is shared. But if we have um, no variables remaining because we've eliminated them, we have a false statement that remains, then we have to be thinking no solution because there is no overlap. So with those three um, ways, well it's a new system, solving by substitution, with those three solutions, I could get zero solutions, I could get one, two or three, but the, we would get solutions there, or infinite, we now have a way we can do this without graphing. So we're going to practice it tonight and see how well it works for you and bring any questions you have uh, to class.